Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this Wednesday morning to celebrate Pansel. We're going to begin with our gathering, which is found on page 279 of the Red Hymnal underneath your chairs. It's the small number towards at the bottom of the page towards the front of the book. Again, that's page number 279. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Pam, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. I invite you to stand as you are able. As we continue with the Thanksgiving for baptism, the responses are found on the next page. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We are buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We, we glorify, glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We, we worship, worship you. you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with hymn number 773, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Pam. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And I invite uh, Sig and Michael to come forward at this time to share some family remembrances and words this morning. Besides being my wife, she is also my best friend, mother, grandmother, aunt, and cousin, and so on. But above all, she is a great, great Christian, always relying on God for everything until she took the last step. She knew who she was, and who was in control. She also knew she was going to see her father Almighty in heaven. She had many friends to help her in the very difficult times and good times. In this year, for example, there was Mama and Chris and Betty. After meeting for Painesville, there was Karen and Diane and Wanda. And of course, many of you were also included. And there are many more out there who were good friends of hers. So thank you for your good friends. Pam's passing was touching, and I would like to read the shortest bit to you from praise by Barbara Curry about the qualities of great teachers. It's entitled, Great Teachers Make a Difference. <clears throat> a great teacher is someone who sees each child as a unique person and encourages A great teacher looks beyond each child and sees inside their soul. A great teacher has a caring heart that respects and understands. A great teacher is someone with a special touch, a ready smile, that takes the time to listen to both sides and always tries to get better. A great teacher is someone who can look past disruption and rebellion recognize birth of change, someone who teaches the entire class and helps to build confidence and self-esteem. A great teacher makes a difference <clears throat> in each child's life and affects each family and the future of us all. <clears throat> Pam was God's gift to my daughter Nicole and my son Philip and the entire family. It is he who I miss. It is he who made her who she is. I am a miss of you and so are my children. Thank you for your good work. <clears throat> this first year he is going to become his cousin again. Chris, my, my cousin Pam, the funniest thing that she was actually my mom, but you were expecting her, not mom. My grandmother Gertrude's younger sister Eleanor had Pam with her child just one year before my mom, Eleanor's niece, had me. We didn't care about any of that. We were just two little girls with blonde hair growing up together when my Aunt Eleanor and Uncle Art were confused for country. Which is Lake Shawnee in New Jersey. When they left Jersey City, we could see each other more often and sometimes got together for holidays. I grew up in Paramus, which was about an hour away, an hour away from the new home of Lake Shawnee. In summer, we were back and forth visiting each other. Pam's older brother, Arthur, worked at Bendix in Peterborough, which was near Paramus. My cousin Art became our chauffeur. So it was back and forth, before and after work. Art was always quiet during those times, enjoying his cigarette and cuddling up to my sister. When I got to Lake Shawnee, I was home, always homesick. 
Sam would always cheer me up, and we would go out on our little adventures. And I remember that one summer. We were home alone. Uncle Arthur worked for Valentine Beer in Newark. And Aunt Eleanor took a bus to Dover to work in the candy shop. Sam and I traveled on foot to the beach. We went swimming in the lake, except for I couldn't swim. And Sam took, and she helped me to get out of the dock. There was a small store by the beach where we could buy ice cream and candy. Sam always bought the biggest Reese's peanut butter cup. And I always had a frozen milkshake bar. No one bothered us and we'd get back to the house. Sometime Andy asked us to cook dinner together. And time passed and I knew in my heart that if Sam went off to college in Minnesota, she probably never came back to New Jersey. I was right. Fell in love and got married and I graduated high school. So my friendship with Sam is now a sweet memory. We saw each other a little like adults. But you can never break that fierce uh, bond of loyalty to each other. Patriarch that we all call Best of Papa. We had four daughters and three sons. <clears throat> My mother, Jean, was looking out for all of us over all those years. Sam was the nicest, kindest, and sweetest person you've ever met. If you were sitting here now and listening, probably four or five years old in New Jersey. Maybe it's because the first wedding I ever went to, but I just remember the way they were dressed up. I remember Aunt Pam's friends who were so nice to me as a little boy who just kept running around. <laughs> we have lots of memories and conversations over the years. Just two years ago, weeks and weeks ago, I remember my mom saying one of her memories was when she was seven or eight years old and watching Aunt Pam one day because they're only two at, some, at home in Jersey City. And they wanted to see a fire truck. So my, my mom, being eight or nine, called in a false alarm fire <laughs> down the street. And they went and stood outside and my mom said to Pam, make sure you don't tell anybody that I called. And they stood outside and the truck came flying by and Aunt Pam was like three years old, and she screamed out as they were passing by, My sister called you all! <laughs> they told lots of stories about the sweet shop that my grandmother and grandfather owned in Jersey City. And now uh, my mom and Aunt Pam would sneak down in the middle of the night and into the sweet shop to read the comics and, and see a funny cameo. There were lots of memories over the years. I remember us loading together in our first, a little tiny comet car, shoved in for the first time, driving from New Jersey to, to Minnesota. And then one Christmas, we loaded in the back of the pickup. Forget about seatbelt. <laughs> we were in the back of the pickup with a topper on, and we drove across country in the middle of winter to surprise. We didn't even tell them we were coming. We showed up out here for Christmas. Aunt Pam was the, the first one in our family ever to leave New Jersey until I did. The rest of them are all still back there. Everything you see on TV about New Jersey and all the people in New Jersey, it's real. <laughs> it's not fake. But I remember driving up and not being able to get back when I was in seminary, not be able to get back to New Jersey, so I came up and 
spend Thanksgiving up here because it was a quick trip. It was pretty amazing. Over all the years, she suffered, suffered a lot with di different physical disabilities. One thing that amazed me about Camp Hen is that she still had a family and a full career. No matter how bad it got, it didn't take away from the life that she was going to have. One of the sweetest people is what some few people say over and over again. Her grandkids, she loves. Luke and Josh. Mallory, we just met today, but I have seen every picture of your whole life. tell me every story, every sport, and everything that happened. You never have to doubt your grandmother's commitment to you and your family. <clears throat> to Nicole and Eric, my mom was proud of both of them. Proud of the people you've become and, and, and proud of the families that you have. Several years ago, Aunt June wrote me a, a note. And in the bottom of that note, she said, uh, Best of Papa would be proud. That this is why uh, we left Noah like this. And I can say that to you both. Best of Papa. See, I, I've watched you from afar for over 40 years. A man of integrity, a man who uh, sacrificed to take care of his family. I want you to know that we respect and esteem all of you. My job takes me around the world, and I get to see the best and the worst that humanity has to offer. And I got to tell you, I consider you one of the best that humanity has to offer. She knew all of the big things and all of the little everyday things going on in my and my family's life. We had fun talking about what we and our families were doing, sharing lots of pictures planning recipes and activities for when we would visit each other. She continued to do fun things for us as adults. She always had ice cream for my husband at her house, and she had taste of home gifts, gift boxes sent to me. And recently she was excited about and planning for her nephew and his wife and children to come and visit with all of us. My mom was so in love with her grandchildren. When I told her in, Painesville, in person in Painesville that I was pregnant with her first grandchild, after congratulations and all of the excitement, we suddenly had to make a trip to her school classroom. Once there, she pulled out a package that had the cutest and softest child-sized backpack that carried an adorable and soft little brown teddy bear. She had brought it and bought it and saved it for her grandchild, but didn't want Dad to think she was crazy for buying it, so she had it tucked away in her classroom. <laughs> Mom made visits and overnight stays very special for her grandchildren. For occasions such as Christmas, Easter, or birthdays, she would put together a fun table for the kids to eat and play at. She had special and fun plates, cups and treats, decorations, and activities for each occasion, all just for the kids. Even a regular visit to Grandma and Grandpa's was treated like a special occasion. She and my dad had all kinds of games, toys, and activities ready for the kids and 
were right by their sides doing the activities with the kids. From bounce houses, slip and slides, and sports equipment to painting, Lego sets, Easter egg hunts, decorating cookies and water balloons, every single visit to Grandma's was fun and full of love. Every night, every overnight stays always included piles of extra soft blankets and pillows, picking out and watching movies, popcorn and lots of ice cream with all the different toppings. My mom loved Christmas and made that the most special time. My mom talked about growing up in New Jersey, including living at Lake Shawnee and getting fountain drinks at a store her parents had for a time when she was young. She loved her parents, brother, and especially her sister, who she spoke with and texted so often until her passing. She talked about laughing with Karen and co-workers. I remember Saturday morning coffee downtown Litchfield with my mom, Lana, Chris, and sometimes Chris's mom and Betty, as well as all of us kids. I remember Christmas Eve at St. Paul's Church coming home and opening Christmas gifts from her Sunday school students and her making apple dumplings. I remember my mom and dad bringing my kids to Vanilla Bean for breakfast whenever they visited us in Two Harbors. My mom loved my dad. My parents would have celebrated their 53rd anniversary this September They've had a lifetime of experiences together. College, traveling to see family, raising a family, enjoying grandchildren, working, having fun, and caring for each other and serving others in their family and community. Their faith in God has been their priority throughout their life together. My mom was simply the best. May God bless the memory of Pam Pfeiffer. The scriptures that were chosen today, the first one comes from Isaiah 43. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And our gospel reading from Matthew 11. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here ends our readings for this morning. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the risen Christ. Amen. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. This reading has been coming back to me over and over again since we met Sig to plan for today's service. I pray that this reading brings you and Nicole and Eric and your families and all the families and friends gathered here today some peace in the midst of this difficult time. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. Today we celebrate the life, and to quote Sig, of one tough lady. Sig, you and Pam carried a lot of burdens together. Her health concerns over the years, I can only imagine, were overwhelming at times. You were always there to support and dutifully care for Pam, and, always, and Pam was always smiling and making the best of whatever situation that she was in. And occasionally, those roles were reversed once in a while. You carried 
those heavy burdens together just like you promised to do nearly 53 years ago. And there was another promise made then and that had begun uh, at your baptisms even earlier. The promise that through all the struggles of this world and all the joys of this world, God would be there with you and in you. God promises to never abandon us, never leave us, and never forsake us. I know that you know this promise, but I want to say it out loud to remind us all that the grief and pain of losing Pam seems so overwhelming as it should, because this is a huge loss. But that you do not walk alone. When our burdens are heavy, God promises to help carry us and carry those burdens and the heaviness of our grief. And he promises us rest. As we have heard and as we have witnessed over the years, together, Sig, you and Pam have felt the weight of health burdens, being eased by the love that you shared, by the gift of your family, and by the joy that you both received and gave to so many. What a blessing. Today we grieve. Today we console one another in the pain of loss. That is certain. But today we also celebrate a life well spent. Today we celebrate one tough lady who demonstrated resilience and optimism and love. Resilience in so many ways, including going back to college after her children were born to receive her degree, showing some serious resilience there. But not just any degree. A degree in education, focused on early childhood special education. Education, a passion she shared with her beloved husband. A passion to care for our youth, to teach and to mentor, to guide and empower our kids to achieve more than they could even imagine. Pam approached her profession with the same unwavering commitment, resilience, and optimism that she faced every other part of her giving love freely to all her students and to the staff that she connected with. We know all too well the burdens of being an educator, the long days, the sleepless nights, the desire to help students, but not just with their academics, also with the struggles in their lives. Being that beacon of hope in a student's life, teaching us not that, that is, teaching is not a job, but it's a calling. A calling that Pam embraced, and in doing so, she was a blessing for so many. Showing in her calling as a teacher, her calling as a mother, and as a grandmother, as a wife, and a friend, and so much more. The gift God gave so freely to her. To love one another. To be a blessing to one another, to remind us all that we do not walk this world alone. It seems that the Isaiah text chosen for today, uh, one I believe that Pam understood in a deep and profound way, perhaps a way that only someone who endured what she has over the years could. But I think it gives us hope as well. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be there with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God. Nothing in all the world can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing. It says in Paul's letter to the Romans that not even death can separate us from that love. Today we grieve because there is great loss and sorrow. There is no getting around that fact. I can only imagine that at times it feels like a raging fire 
or a feeling of drowning in the grief of losing Pam. That's why we gather today. To remind each other that the waters will not overwhelm us. We will not be drowned in its weight and the fire of despair will not consume us. God is with us. And as hard as today and the past several days have been and as difficult as the coming days may be, the promise of God's presence goes with us to shelter us from the water, the fire, the heavy burdens, and the weight of grief. Pam was that example for us, an example of a blessing in the midst of all that life throws at us. Her active involvement in her community, her students' lives, her church, she shared that blessing freely. She shared her heart freely, too. But if you wanted to know where her heart was at all times, you don't have to look any further than her family, as Michael so eloquently shared. She knew the love of God, and that was demonstrated in the way she loved and was loved by her family. Speaking frequently about you all, she didn't just share that with family, she made sure to share that with everybody, how proud she is of you all, how much she loved you. She eagerly awaited visits, phone calls, and any ways that she could connect. Her love overflowed for you. And in turn, your love for her overflowed through her. Now for just a moment, if you'll bear with me, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to share just a few words just with Sig. Sig, we've known each other a while now. We've traveled together. Uh, we've experienced a few things along this journey. I know you to be an incredibly compassionate man, a loving man, a man of deep integrity. I also know that on occasion, you might be just a little bit stubborn at times. Is that, is that true? Just a little? Okay. Well, don't worry, because I am too, okay? So we're in the same boat. So I know the idea of giving up and uh, letting others share in these burdens that you're carrying, it's not easy. But what I'd like you to know is that you are surrounded by a community, by a family, by a church community, and by a whole lot of people that just love you. We're here to help you carry that burden. You don't carry it alone. Nobody heard about the uh, stubborn part, Sig. That was just between you and I, okay? But for all of us, this blessing of presence, this blessing of God's presence in our lives, that goes with all of us. That same blessing of love is our promise too. So to all of you, all of God's people, do not fear for God has redeemed you. God has called you by name, and you are God's. That's the promise we live in now. That's the hope we carry until we gather once more. I pray that you know that love in the days ahead, and that that blessing may give you some comfort in this time. Let us sing together now hymn 638. It's the large numbers in your hymnal, 638. Blessed Assurance.
We continue with the confession of faith found on page 282 of that hymnal, small page number at the bottom near the front. Again, that's 282. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is sent to the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this morning, our refrain will be, God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God and holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of life everlasting. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue with the hymn, Beautiful Savior, number 838, this time at the back of the hymnal, 838.
Sig and the family invite you all to join us in the fellowship hall immediately following the service for a meal. I will share a prayer now uh, to bless that meal. Gracious Lord, you bless the loaves and the fish. Bless the food we will soon receive and those who have prepared it. Bless also our fellowship and conversation and strengthen us all in faith. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. We will continue as we commend Pam to God and to heaven. Let us commend Pam to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Pam. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And we'll be sharing the committal this morning as well here in the sanctuary. Ensure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our sister Pam, and we commit her ashes to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord's face shine on her with grace and with mercy. And the Lord look upon her with favor and give her peace. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal, grant her, O Lord, and let light perpetually shine upon her. We'll now sing together our final hymn, hymn 790, the large numbers in the back of your hymnal, hymn 790, day by day. Thank you. 